In this portion of this journey, we will begin by the aspect of methodical learning that best suits each practitioner accordingly. This portion will be taught by using the stringed instrument. Each of the strings will be used to explain certain aspects of sound theory used in music or melodious sound. Let us begin by first exploring the Western perspective. In Western music, there exists a pattern of notes that cover all the notes and consists of 12 notes in total. This is commonly called the chromatic scale. As we ascend in this pattern of notes that go from low to high in pitch, there are special names given for each of the specific tones depending on the intended direction of the scale itself. This can also be seen as an enharmonic in the context of a note having two different names depending on the intended direction of the scale. Simply put, a C sharp on a D major scale can also be seen as a D flat on a D harmonic minor scale. Back to the concept of the chromatic scale. We will first begin the learning process with the chromatic scale as we apply it to the stringed instrument. On the guitar, as was shown on the other videos, we should review the notes of each of the six strings. E, A, D, G, B, E. Let's go to the sixth string, E. Hit the open string and then say E. Now press the first fret and strike the string and recite each note as you play it. Now this will probably be extremely difficult if we don't have some basic theory in regards to accurately identifying each note using sharps and flats. In this area, we will use the sharps in identifying the notes. The general understanding in the identification of the notes is that there are sharps between each of the notes except between B, C, E, and F. Therefore, we must identify the notes as we go up with the sharps going upward. For instance, F, then F sharp, G, then G sharp, as we go from fret to fret. In understanding this concept, let's go to the sixth string and call out each of the notes beginning with the open E string. Do this for all the frets with the pattern repeating itself. Do this until you get to the twelfth fret. Then go to the next string and do the same and then do this for all of the following strings. Repeat this often until you are relatively comfortable on any of the strings with identifying the notes. In doing this, we are improving our memory capabilities, coordination, and analytical skills. We improve our memory capabilities in this sense by remembering the rules of the order or notes that lies in between the notes. In improving coordination, we are actually understanding the arrangements of notes and putting them together in a comprehensive order. The improvement of analytical skills can be seen in the identification process of the notes, their patterns of sharps and analyzing the sounds of the sharps, and starting and ending points of the octaves for each of the strings. This requires a significant amount of analyzation skills to distinguish the sounds of the sharps placements of the notes on each of the strings and their orders that vary on each due to the absence of certain sharps for certain notes. For instance, again, B, C, E, and F. Make a map of the instrument and include all of the notes you have previously identified. Analyze the map and get better acquainted with the instrument. In constructing this map, we are able to see numerous routes and pathways that are interconnected when we collectively observe the strings. A certain note is in different places on different strings and can have a different octave to it as well. Patterns can be played from this broad pattern called the chromatic scale when we analyze the map. Also, note that when we make this map and identify different locations of notes due to the strings, we can apply certain points of references in the process for memorization purposes. Take either the first or the sixth string, for example. In analyzing the patterns of notes from the map, we can develop points of references to improve memory of the placements of the notes. 
and mapping out the strings, focus on the first fret, focus on the fifth fret, and either the seventh or the ninth fret. Use these as reference points for the overall memory points of note locations of the instrument itself. The brain is said to work effectively in retaining information in blocks, like in the area of words in a sentence or keywords. In this area, we are dividing the instrument into reference points. The first fret covers the first area, the fifth fret to the ninth fret, or eighth fret covers the midpoint, and the eighth or ninth fret to the twelfth fret and beyond are considered the endpoints. Equally important, memorize the actual notes of these frets because it will be easier and more effective to quickly go to any note in any area of the instrument with ease. Employ this method for each string and observe the subtleties in these patterns as you go. We will discuss these in the future episodes.